what I'm going to talk to you about is um, how I see some of the future. And um, we've done a little bit of that ourselves. And um, last year, we published a book from now on, which really committed ourselves to uh, thinking about a place, the history of a place and uh, sustainability. And so I think it's a lot of the stuff that we were doing and thinking about pre-pandemic and now post-pandemic and this, the, the rate of change has just been accelerated, which is like super exciting in some ways. I mean, the pandemic is awful, but there's some good things that are coming out of it. And, and there's a lot of rate of change for Kent is, is quite extraordinary. So what I was gonna say was that um, uh, there's a question session uh, towards the end of this, and we're gonna leave some space for questions and chat. So um, if you ask a question and you wanna give us your email address and say who you are, and this was my question, we'll send you a book. Um, so um, I, what I'm gonna do is just gonna whiz you through a few projects that we've been uh, done and looked at and and then I'm going to try a, a live draw. Um, so when I'm drawing and talking, sometimes I slow down with my talking or slow down with the drawing, so you're going to have to forgive me. But um, we like thinking about a lot of things, and this is um, Elwick Place, and this is about creating a, a, a nighttime economy, and we love magnates, and we created this interior, and it's all about local, and it's all about local food, local pro produce, and uh, keeping it Kent and keeping it Kent even more is Curious Brewery, uh, Kent Beer and really putting a brewery in the heart of Ashford and and giving food um, a place as well within the brewery and then supporting the industry of Canterbury which is um, student and tourism but this is a student halls and we are on phase two and three now, and it's a thousand student beds. And then putting a hotel right in the heart of historic Canterbury. Um, and we've recently just finished this project and we're looking forward to the rooftop restaurant opening. And you're just gonna see these insane views of the rooftops of Canterbury and the cathedral that people just haven't been able to enjoy before. And we are super excited about the world's first multi-story skate park opening soon. Um, if our Spanish friends could finish giving us the facade, we're gonna get there soon. And we've had some young people in there already just testing it out, which is super amazing. And this is a building for young people in, investing in the generation of the future and another project we're really looking forward to completing very soon um, by Christmas is uh, Benedon uh, Concert Hall and it's going to be a mini Glyndebourne in Kent and this is a shot of what the interior and where it's getting to and the progress of that and the attention to detail and acoustics is just insane. And we do these one-off projects where we can experiment with the future of materiality and technology. And um, these paragraph 79 houses really set um, a benchmark and then we can filter this technology down into other projects. And the combining architecture and art, and we're very excited to be working with Mr. Doodle, who's a homegrown internet phenomenon. And this is to create his new artist studio and, and to foster this sort of talent. He's 27 and his, his career is just going crazy. He sold his last piece of 1.2 million in Tokyo. Um, and to, to foster this sort of talent in Kent is where we want to be. And to 
harness and create buildings in landscape which can manage landscape and and our, our growing vineyard industry um, within Kent and bringing the, the wine houses of Kent together and enabling them to compete against the best in the world. And think rethinking about hotels and how hotels can um, be in the future and can we create destinations within themselves. So some of the thinking that we've been doing is around living and how we're going to live in the in the future and how we can how we can really think about living sustainably could we get to a point where we um, have a self-sustaining um, housing and that's only going to happen if we super insulate uh, our new houses uh, and in super insulating I mean air tightness um, so the amount of energy that we need to put into them is really low so that really helps us to make the new technologies work and the best way to create energy is is solar so really believe that solar is the is the future and then can we create winter gardens um, on these houses to harness more and control the, the temperature and then make sure that every single house has a um, electric charging points because electric is the future and a commitment to garden and landscape and then a home office so that we can work from home as well as from the company and can we create our own mini um, plant spaces to power so mini plant electrical battery to store energy the problem we have at the moment is that if this is January, this is December, and we come all the way through, and then we have, this is the, the amount of electricity we need. In the summer months, we're absolutely fine and we can store that energy uh, in batteries for, for the night, but we're left with these winter months where we can't create energy. And so we're working with some quite, interesting companies at the moment and exploring the opportunities for hydropower. Could we create mini hydropower plant spaces that could com compensate for the, for the solar and we can, um, we need to find other ways. And then if we could multiply this concept of a self-sustaining home and an Englishman's home is his castle, could we then multiply that so we had 50, 100 homes, then we have our own mini power plants in that new development. If we could get to a situation where we didn't need a grid, we didn't need to go back into the grid, that we didn't need the infrastructure or power stations, that every single building or every single house became its own power station, I mean, that would be the, the, the mecca, if you like. And because we're working differently and living differently than the hospitality industry and being in Kent is, is going to be uh, different. And we're starting to, whoa, we're starting to rethink that. And if you think about the old model, so you had a building, um, hotel, corridor down the middle, And then on the ground floor, you've got your reception and uh, maybe a bar and restaurant. And it, it's potentially like 70% rooms, 30% other. And could we rethink this model? And we're starting to try and rethink this because we think that... Um, 
we can have a situation where we have a working break. So um, people will want to come to Kent and they might work from uh, a hotel or, so can we extend their stay? Can we open the hotel to, to, to business? Um, so the ground floor could work a lot harder. So we'd have bar, uh, restaurant, uh, lounge, a working lounge, a Wi-Fi lounge, and then meeting spaces, conference, and then in the basement, maybe a spa, um, a gym, and then above, we could then have um, traditional rooms. But then what we're starting to look at now is a lot more is service departments. So you can stay there for a week, two weeks, longer if you want. Um, and then on the roof, can we create a destination a restaurant, maybe a pool? you know, uh, where you're benefiting from uh, the view. And we're starting to think about this new concept where we're kind of turning the whole thing on its head. So um, this space might be 60% and the room content might be 40%. And that means if we've got more people staying for longer, they're going to the different towns and that's helping the economy of the place and it's a complete geography change. So how we work is changing. We're no longer bound by, we have to be in the city, but the city is super important. It's, we've got an umbilical cord to it. In Kent, we have super amazing transport with the high speed, but if we take, a traditional model and this is the office building and, and we have at the ground floor we've got reception and then we've got offices coming through and then the, the boss always was at the top here and then literally um, all the way around this building like this would be cars, loads of cars. Everyone's commuting in like this. And, and it's taking up a lot of area of the space and it's completely vertical. Now, in Kent, we have this opportunity to we have more land in terms of in compared to London and we're starting to rethink and can we, what is the office of the future? How is that going to work? Could we create a building that is lower that might sit on a, a plinth And you could hide some cars underneath or transport modes, but we really want to be somewhere near um, station uh, and, and a, a public transport modes. But then we set the building hopefully in parkland and we're encouraging and making it easier for cycling and walking and running and exercising. And then we're creating environments inside the building, which are open to the landscape. And within that, we can then start to think about how does the three two day week work? How do we create spaces that can inspire people? How do we create R and D spaces, cafe spaces, social spaces, what we call serendipity moments. So it's those moments where people meet and, and talk and then, uh, and then something comes out of that. Uh, ideas, spaces, inspirational spaces. How do we 
encourage people into the workplace so that we can reduce what will will become a knowledge gap if we're not careful so the the younger person coming into the business wants to learn from the the, the knowledge that others have gathered um, so we need to make sure that we're coordinating the spaces so there's still home working but there's these spaces within the building and these buildings can be smaller so maybe this would be like a third of what the previous office was because you're combining um, home working uh, um, within the space and we are then thinking about the health and well-being of of the of the workers and what does health and well-being mean well if we are working um, uh, we're working more sustainably we're working from home more but we're working in a way where we're closer to where we work then we have time we have more time because we're not being a slave to the commute and i'm a great believer in that we need to enjoy the journey uh, and the journey is really important i mean the journey of life or the, your career and and so on um, and so that we can harness that and we we can use the gym we can maybe go to a spa um, we can go to that hotel uh, which is a destination we can enjoy the fruits of our labor in Kent and eat and 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 the experience that uh, the, the fabulous restaurants and the homegrown produce that we're creating um, and we can live a more um, sustainable life where we are cycling and getting fit and getting cardio through our journey and we have more time for leisure pursuits and that will help our mental well-being and we'll have more time for our families and that will then feed into enjoying the landscape of, of, of place and nature. And then ultimately, why else are we living here? Um, because we're in the garden of England and it will truly hold that status. Um, and, and so we could really create environments where we can, we can live, monetize and, and be healthy. So how do all these things connect? And transport and infrastructure is just so important to get this infrastructure right because otherwise these things don't come together. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna draw a drone flying car here. Um, I mean, super interesting. Sorry, it's not the best drawing I've ever done that, but you get the idea. I just don't see this as the future. Um, I think it's, I don't agree with everything that Elon Musk talks about, but he doesn't see it as the future either. I, I just find it difficult to believe because um, we struggle driving cars and having accidents crashing and so on and so forth. I, I, I just think about, um, uh, the drunk driver flying a car into a building. I just can't see it. And flies are as annoying as possible in our skies. So why do we want to put uh, drones flying around in the future? Um, and, and I just think that these will come, I don't think they'll come crashing down, but I just don't see it. I see a future which is more about um, building on what we already have. And that is that super fast trains, uh, the high speed trains, sorry, that's not the best drawing of a train, but you get the idea. Um, it's 
automated hop on vehicles, which can take us these small journeys. It's it's electric scooters which are taking off massively and we need to manage them. It is the the idea of the the Brompton bike or cycling and the Brompton bike's really interesting because you could you can you can halve your journey. So if your journey to work is half an hour, you could uh, you could take the journey on public transport or, or in your car, but then park up and then take your Brompton out and cycle the rest. And it's all about combining cardio uh, and making those things work. I do, I see, I don't see the car disappearing. I think the car's gonna just get stronger. We, that's the worst car I think I've drawn in a long time, but it, you get the idea. Um, and what we need to do is think about ways in which the, the car can uh, adapt um, so that it can not clog up our towns and our cities. And I think that if you take Canterbury as an example, we should be preserving the center of Canterbury uh, within the confines of the, the wall, but thinking about how we can um, unblock Canterbury because it's just, it, it's, it's battling with its historical context. And could the future of moving cars around in the future be underground? And I think this is, uh, if we could create uh, ways in which our cars could automate underground and move through our towns and cities uh, a lot quicker, um, and then we come out into the countryside and they can be more mobile. The, the, the future of transport is integrated. It's, it's about cardio. It's about being sustainable. It's about electrifying. And we've, that pace of change is happening so quickly. I can't believe it. It's happening. And uh, the worry is that um, there won't be enough batteries. There won't be enough lithium and um, there won't be enough power. So we need to think about other ways in which we can harness energy sustainably to create a better um, transport um, opportunity. So we said this in our book and the color of tomorrow is green or no color at all. And you know that if we, the sooner we, um, get on board with the change and changing lifestyle and, and, and being uh, greener, the, the, the more economic opportunities that will um, unfold and the better preserved Kent will be and a better place to, to live. And um, I thought this was, it's COP26 at the moment, and this is very much on everybody's agenda. And if not now, then when? And, and really um, the, the pace of change is happening uh, so quickly. So it's our responsibility to try and work out where that change is going to try and facilitate that. Um, so um, I'll probably um, stop there so we can have a meaningful chat. Um, and, um, and, and I will say that we need to think and keep it Kent. Um, there's an email address there as well. So um, we're, we're giving out books. So Angel's here, she'll, she'll, she'll gladly take your emails and then, and if you give us her address and then we can, we can go from there. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. And there. And we can try and open this up a little and um, see if we can have a conversation. Is there anyone who wants to go first? Have we? Unmuting everyone now. 
Okay. Is that Paul? Hi there, Guy. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that was an interesting uh, presentation. I thought it was going to be some sort of uh, drafting around building regs and uh, is the sort of planning legislation and in relation to COP26 and climate change moving fast enough, but it's a, it's a whole sort of um, different perspective on things on every single aspect of, of sort of life and, um, you know, work, leisure, um, your home life. So it's, it's, it's a whole different perspective, I suppose, that, um, you know, I suppose are people looking at this enough rather than sort of waiting for sort of legislation to catch up really, I suppose. I think that um, uh, we have an opportunity in Kent to maybe think about things differently than anywhere else that in the sense that we're so close to London, we're, we're almost like um, the front garden to, to, the, to the country, if you like, and you think about Europe and you think about London and, um, and then we've got this train coming all the way through. And um, so we have this opportunity to um, rethink a little and try and bring all these things together because I think we're a county that people want to come and visit. I think we're a county that people want increasingly want to come and live in. Um, and 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 I think we've there is the, the value there to to start to think differently about how we do things. Um, and I'm very lucky that I've got some really exciting clients that want the sharing those values now. And yeah. I'm starting to see, uh, I'm really starting to see investment in a different way that I hadn't seen uh, before. So companies looking to invest in green technologies uh, and starting to think about how we combine all these things together in terms of the built environment, the infrastructure and, um, and the technologies that come together. Everything's there. We just need to understand them and bring them together in some sort of way. And then, and, and um, as a as a planner uh, yourself, um, I gave a presentation to Ashford the other evening, a members briefing, and all of those members were all talking about sustainability in a way that I've never heard them talk about it. I know it's yeah. COP twenty six in the moment, but it's totally on their minds, which is super interesting for us. Really interesting. Yeah. I suppose um, if I can jump in with the next question is, is do you think that's going to happen organically or do you, people need to drive it themselves or do sort of councils or authorities need to drive it themselves because just sort of experience from moving from the London market to the Kent market, you have the London plan, which is, you know, forces everyone to provide a higher level of sustainability and you know, energy sort of credits within their developments where Kent, it's really sort of hit and miss between different authorities. A lot of the, most of the authorities have declared a climate emergency, but really don't know how to implement that. So do you think it's something that people should be um, sort of, in you know, some ways forced to do through legislation or do you think it's going to happen again? I, I think it's a combination, but I do think the clients are becoming, certainly our commercial clients are becoming far more, and, and developers is, are becoming far more wise to it. And this is what people want, you know, they, they, we need these solutions because the, the market is there for it. Um, so as long as it's affordable and, and that's, that's, that's the, um, I think in what, what people want is to carry on living their lives with all the comfort, but know it's sustainable yeah. um, and not having to um, compromise their lifestyle in that way. Yeah. And um, so it's up to us as the designers and planners and construction to try and think about how we can facilitate that. So it's easy, it's easy to be sustainable. It's not difficult, it, it's not create a hardship. It doesn't, um, doesn't change, you, there, there are small changes you need to make in your life, but it's not life changing, you're not having to, but, but, but so those steps have become much easier. And I suppose it's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's if, if more people are, the more and more people are doing it, the more people are exercising, the more people well-being, the more people on their bike, the easier it is to travel to work and everything else, the more people will do it and it becomes more the norm. And that's what yeah. bringing about changes. Right. Thanks. Anybody else? 
Uh, yes, there please. was a question but, in the yeah. um, in the chat um, from Maria Callo asking if we have any sustainable living projects in the pipeline. Um, so we we we're, we're currently working with a developer who's and um, we're also working for a um, a bank, um, uh, believe it or not, um, and both of, both of them have uh, challenged us to rethink um the the what the future will be and 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 how we can live and can we get to um net carbon can we get to can we think about materiality can we think about geography of materiality uh so that we we're, we're not having to bring everything from china can we can we think about um energy but most importantly, and this is where it's integrated, can we think about the architecture of it so we can minimize the energy that comes into it? So for me, this is the first time this has happened um, where we've actually been commissioned by a developer and, and, and a bank, which is pretty crazy, um, to, 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 to start to do some blue sky thinking. So there's money coming into that to, to enable that to happen. And then it's about pulling in the right people as well to help us who have that um, technical knowledge to, to, to make that happen. So that's, that's, that's real change. Um, that's that's for, for us is because um, quite often we have to go off and think about these things ourselves in terms of our R&D, but now somebody's prepared to pay us to do that, which is wonderful. <laughs> uh, good, good morning. Uh, I Angelica, um, uh, is is it possible to um, to to uh, post Please, a question yeah. for? Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. Good, good morning, guy. Uh, thank Hi. you very much for that. That was absolutely fascinating, mate. To be perfectly honest, and uh, you know, all credit to you. Um, I've, I posed uh, one thing in the in the chat room there about uh, a small local company uh, in Canterbury called Convert Energy. I don't know whether they. They're a business you're aware of. Um, they are a small renewable company. Uh, I, I've got no vested interest. I, I you know, I, I run my own business, but uh, they are a small renewable company that we've worked with in the past. They have a concept, or there is there is a concept out there about the Energy Earth Bank, where uh, where we can uh, draw um, solar PV um, uh, and store it in the ground uh, and raise the ground temperature so that when we draw it back on it um, uh, like a ground source heat pump uh, yeah we we draw from the ground source heat pump in the winter months but our uh, coefficient of performance is is substantially better than you might ordinarily get fascinating concepts and it will be worth you well them yeah. speaking to you just to get those sort of ideas if really, you could yeah. norman can i ask you to email us i will do and, I will and do. then give us the contact and yeah we'll send you a book norman yeah no thank, thank you. you no thank something you. for but, your coffee table no thank that's you. right <laughs> okay um i have another question for you um building on on the themes that you uh, that you've just uh, talked about where do you see the future for our towns and cities that are you know, otherwise very much in decline at the moment uh, in that respect for retail and for uh, um, uh, uh, and, and for otherwise leisure. I, I think there is a natural path that seems to be emerging, but I'd be very interested to... Uh, so we're, we're, we are currently working for Hammerson. I don't know if you've heard of them. Yes, they have yeah. got, they've got like massive retail in... 17 cities i mean it's bonkers they own huge chunks of town centers and they're asking us to rethink um because they've got <laughs> acres of square meters that you know i mean it's acres of it that are empty um and it's a huge problem but i the the conversations we're having with them are um can we rethink um can we rethink our town centers uh, for for leisure, uh, for food, for health, for well-being, for um, medical, for you know, how do we animate these spaces? How do we bring people into those spaces? Um, can we can we do uh, recreation? Um, can we create skate parks? They've asked us. 
Um, we are looking at putting big football domes on um, uh, car parks, on the roofs of car parks, so we can have five-a-side football leagues and um, bring people in. Um, so, and then we're also looking at creating the largest thrift shop in the world at the moment. Um, so, um, can we can we encourage upcycling? Can we encourage um, you know um, to move away from uh, cheap 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 clothing that's having to travel around the world? And can can we can we make um, can we make uh, secondhand clothing? Well, it is pretty cool anyway, but can we combine it with events? So you might have a 70s, I don't know, party, disco event, and you've got all the 70s clothes there as well. It's, um, or 80s or 90s now. I mean, it seems a bit crazy to think about that in that way. So <laughs> we're, we're trying to be really, um, think very cleverly about how we can take these spaces and turn them into something. Um, they might be workspaces as well, combined sort of workspaces, and that. That's that's um, um, there's a lot of blue sky thinking, but there's a massive problem there. We don't want to create big voids and holes in our town centres. We need to animate the high street. There's definitely a future for the high street um, because okay, Amazon's amazing and everything can arrive, but we are fundamentally um, uh, humans want to meet and be part of and. Um, we're social social animals, so um, we we need to, especially the more and more we're using tech and everything else, we need to have these opportunities to come come together. So um, there is there is optimistic optimism in terms of our, our, our town centres, and I a lot of people are talking about the workplace being dead, but I don't think it's going to be dead at all. Um, I think it's going to be a, a hybrid, uh, live and kicking, and um, we just got to be really careful about how we reorganize and change. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you see us actually living in town centers and, uh, and cities? Far now? more. Far you more. do. Yeah. 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 Far yeah. more. Um, yeah. Are Absolutely. You, are you familiar with, um, uh, with Quintain? Uh, uh, does Quintain mean anything to you and, and, yes. and what they're doing around Wembley park? You, you know, we we're involved with them and, uh, you know, it, draw, it begs a question whether you ever need to leave Wembley Park actually at that point in time, uh, it, you know, and, and if we adopt principles like that, if they're successful, then we, we, we play straight into the, uh, into the, into concepts that, uh, you know, you're talking about, uh, about uh, sustainability and, and working and living uh close uh, or, or living close to your workspace um and you, all your leisure is close to your workspace and and we're not driving uh we, we're cycling or we're walking uh from one to the other and you know what they're adopting there whilst i think uh, the pandemic has slowed it down a little bit what they're adopting there is very very much uh, that sort of concept actually in that respect but uh, yeah, no, fascinating and thank you really thank good you. Many. okay Sorry? no problems i think thank we're you. We've probably got time for one more, maybe, Andrew. I, I think you're 100% right. Um, you know, as a country, we are, um, we have so much historical fabric. Um, and as a consequence, we've got so many leaking buildings. Um, so it's it's a it's a it's a huge issue, and and we coming across it all the time. And it's a uh, the historic is quite often listed, and the costs associated with renewing the existing is really difficult. And there's no doubt in my mind that we it's so much easier to um, start with a fresh. Um, and and if you if you thought that we could make every single building its own energy plus center, so it it it, it creates enough energy for itself, but plus, um, and and it, maybe if you took our island and it was a blank canvas and we just started again, I'm not saying get rid of every history, but we wouldn't need any power stations, we wouldn't need any infrastructure. We could, you know, um, 
we could become our own power stations. But anyway, that's not a reality. So um, we're left with a situation where we, we definitely need to renew. There's nothing more sustainable than taking a, an old building and then, um, uh, and then renewing it. I love that more than anything. I love old and new coming together. And I have to say that uh, Historic England are just wonderful to work with because they, um, they understand that. And we've had great conversations with them where they are embracing the new and modern architecture and modern technologies, but you just have to do it in a super clever way uh, in order to combine these two things together. And, and if you do that, the, old, the new helps the old to work, um, but you do need to have open-minded conservationists um, in order to make that work. And, and, and it's probably the trickiest work that we do. Um, and it is possible to combine these technologies, but we, we don't want to litter buildings with solar PV and, 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 and you know, unless it's integrated or hidden, um, hidden away. And so we need to be thinking about clever ways in which we can bring the tech in um, and, and, and really start to think about the fabric of those buildings. Um, and it is a really, complex issue um but it's one that we need to 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 in, to embrace if we put too much um legislation in the way the cost will become so prohibitive um that the energy that we need to put into them will become too great so it's a very difficult balancing act between uh, legislative um uh planning uh, and listing and, and and then the demands on the environment and technology and that's only going to get more and more um, with time but I, I do find myself where we're working on a huge amount of listed buildings and um, uh, we're working with Alice Brockway a lot at Historic England that they they have got far more of an open mind and they are really helping us to uh, bring a lot of these buildings back to life um, and a building that I've spent many many years looking at and keep on failing at is the Lido in Margate which fell down yesterday um, fell through the roof fell in yesterday it's absolutely at risk um, and it's these sorts of buildings that we need to to save and bring the old and new together to be able to do that so thank you for the question um, are we about there do you think if I can jump in now, Guy, that, that's great. Yes, you're, you're absolutely spot on. Um, thank you ever so much, everybody, for uh, joining this very first session um, with Guy doing his, uh, his talk this morning. The, the main session for the Kent Property Market is going to begin within the next few minutes. So, um, so if we can close this meeting down now, and for those of you that want to go and see that main presentation, if you go back to the landing page and click the main stage, and uh, you'll see the next presentations for the morning as well. But in the meantime, Guy, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank and you. Angel, thank you as well for uh, your assistance this morning as well. So uh, we'll shut this meeting down and we'll Thanks see you all in the main room. Thank you, guys.